Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 6. Question 1 says, each term in the second row is determined by the function y is equal to 4x plus 10. And then you see they give you this little table. And when you look at this, it actually looks a little bit intimidating if you've never done a problem like this, but it's actually very simple. So they're giving you an equation, which is there, and then they're giving you the x values um, and the y values, obviously. So if you, we just choose any two numbers, so let's choose these two, and you plug that x value, which is equal to zero into your equation, what they're telling you in this little table is that y should equal to 10. Okay, so let's just confirm that. So if we plug in that x value, which is zero into our equation, it would be four times zero plus 10. Four times zero is zero plus 10. That gives you y is equal to 10, which is exactly what it says on your little table. So you can see pretty straightforward. Okay, so what they're asking you is um, if they give you the value of x is equal to 5, they're asking you what the y value is. So very easy, you just take that 5 and you plug it into your equation. So instead of having 4x, you would have 4 times 5 plus 10. That gives you 20 plus 10. So y is equal to 3, which is, uh, excuse me, 30, which is answer D. Question two is a question about triangles. So they're telling you that one angle in a scalene triangle measures 17 degrees. The other angle measures 86. What is the measure of the third angle? Okay, and again, this is another question where you might read it and you say, what the heck is a scalene triangle? Okay, so that's not the main point. The main thing that you have to remember is that when you look at a triangle, whether it's a scalene triangle, a right angle triangle, an isosceles triangle, uh, whatever, every single angle, so the sum of the three angles should be 180, okay? So A plus B plus C is equal to 180. So if you remember that, then this problem is very simple because all you have to do is add up all the angles that you know so here we would have 17 plus 86, which are the two angles that we know, are, is equal to 180. So on the left side, we would first of all tidy up a little bit. So add the 17 and the 86, which gives us 103. And now what we have to do is isolate that A, because that was the, the angle that we are missing. Okay, so we're, we have positive 103, so we would subtract. Okay, so on the left side, that is gonna cancel out. And then on the right side, if we subtract 103 from 180, that gives us 77, all right? So the missing angle was 77. Question three. So this is a question about percentages. They're telling you that Erin has a 30% coupon for the Apple store, and what will her discount be on a phone valued at $990? So the first thing to do is to just kind of eyeball it and, and get an approximate answer. So they're telling you 30%, uh, so that's about a third, and the phone costs about $900, so, so it's gonna be about a third cheaper, right? So that should be around 300, more or less, just kind of eyeball. So when you do the actual problem, you would say 990, the cost of the phone, times 0 0.30, okay? That is the percent discount. And that gives you 297. So why are you multiplying by 0 0.30, okay? So remember that when we talk about percentages, we can express a percent as, um, in this case, 30 over 100, which is the same thing as saying 0 0.30 in decimals or 30%. Question four is a question about proportions. Okay, so they're asking you solve for the missing term in the proportion problem. Here what you do is that you're gonna multiply across like this. So you're gonna multiply seven times the x. So from the bottom left to the top right, that gives you seven x. And then you're gonna multiply 21 times two. So from the bottom left to the top excuse me, bottom right to the top left. 
and that gives you 42. Once you've done that, now you have to find your x value. So you would divide the left side by 7, that's going to cancel out, and then the right side by 7. And that gives you x is equal to 6. So the answer would be C. Okay, so just remember that you have to multiply in this order that I explained before. So from the bottom left to the top right, and then from the bottom right to the top left. The final question, question five, is one that looks at uh, the slope intercept. So it says, uh, what is the y-intercept of the line with a slope of 3 that passes through the points 5, 4? So first of all, we have to remind ourselves of this formula, which, by the way, you don't have to memorize because it will be provided for you in your formula sheet, but you do need to understand what it represents, what the, the different letters mean. So in this formula, uh, the m stands for the slope, the x for the x-coordinates, and the b for the y-intercept. So this is the place where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, so that's the y-value or y-intercept. So if we look back at our problem, uh, we said that the slope was represented by the letter m, and they're telling us it's 3. And then the coordinates uh, that they give us are 5 and 4, and they are ordered as x, y. So when they ask you for the y-intercept, the correct value here, the value for b, would be 4. And then your value for x would be 5. Okay, so the answer is b. Okay, folks, I hope you found that useful. As always, stay positive and stay strong. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want more videos like this, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.